It only takes a few hours for your house to burn down. But after that, you continue to live inside its burnt out husk for months and years. When my house in rural Wisconsin burned down, it was the coldest day of the year. I had started a fire in a rarely used wood stove with the intention that the fire would stay inside the stove, but it had other plans. The actual house being on fire part is definitely the most fun part of having your house burn down. You get to use muscles and lung capacity that up until this point, you've only been pretending to use through exercise and playing sprots. Now, you're faced with a real threat. Saber-toothed tiger shit. It's your pituitary glands, time to shine. Sure, everyone is screaming and crying and you're running around like an idiot trying to remember where you keep your five fire extinguishers, but you have exactly one problem with a very clear solution. Your house is on fire and you need to squirt it with something. Time doesn't slow down as much as the economy of time becomes mutated. Every fire second is worth about a week's worth of non-fire time. You want your dogs to live? Uh, that's gonna cost you jackets for your kids. Oh, you want the hamster? Okay, well, there goes your laptop. Have you ever traded your laptop for a hamster? I have. So I guess the economy of hamsters becomes mutated during a fire as well. Being in a burning house is like the opposite of breathing. The smoke pulls the oxygen out of your lungs and burns your eyes like bear spray. Fire extinguishers? More like smoke make more ofs. The more you spray them on the fire, the more it smokes. So at a certain point, it's a good time to take a break, sit on a stump, and reconsider your concept of heroism until the actual fire department shows up. Hi, is this the library? Yeah, what's your policy on, like, if the books are, you know, a little bit, um, like, on fire? My fire was really bad. It took seven fire departments, 20 fire trucks, two ambulances, and over 50 firefighters to not save the house. They even brought a couple of school buses to make sure none of the firefighters froze to death. And they were all volunteers, God bless them. Even the fire chief had a day job as the owner of the Chevy dealership in town, which I guess sort of makes him rural Wisconsin's Batman. Only, instead of fighting crime out of the Batcave, he fights fires out of Nels Gunderson Chevrolet, Osseo, Wisconsin's choice for new and pre-owned vehicles. Hi, 911. Yeah, my house burned down back in February, and I was wondering if there's anything you can do about that now? Oh, so it's too late, huh? Oh, sounds like I missed the boat. We couldn't see our house, just smoke rising up above the trees. There wasn't anyone to keep us informed as to how bad things were outside of one guy who came over to offer us coffee. As tempting as slamming coffees with my children at 9 p.m. while my house burned down seemed, I declined. My kids, of course, were terrified at first, but within no time, they were back to their old selves, complaining that the fire department hadn't brought us any pizzas. I guess I could have driven to the store, like, yeah, my house was burning down, so I hit up Hardee's for some Frisco burgers, but instead, we did the noble thing and sat there starving and watched the house burn down. The days immediately following a house fire are like attending your own funeral. Everyone you know, even people you haven't talked to for years, is calling and texting and sending you money and testing the waters as to when it will be safe to start making jokes about the time the culmination of your life's efforts got destroyed in 10 minutes. It's actually a pretty incredible feeling, even though you're wearing your brother-in-law's underwear the whole time. Hey, yeah, is this the cable company? Yeah, there's something wrong with my TV, but I don't know if it's on my end or your end. Could you check that for me? Thank you. It's been said that home is where life's laugh. A house isn't just a bunch of lumber and shingles and monkey skull necklaces you bought in Myanmar. It's the place your children sleep, the place your animals shit on the floor. What? Are those like real? The place you throw chairs at your friends after losing board games. Losing a house isn't just a financial loss, it's a loss of time and energy. It's a dark closing chapter to years of memories built there. I built this kitchen. I nailed down these floors. I started these 15 other projects that still weren't finished when the house burned down. 
Something I hear a lot is, at least nobody got hurt. But this is only true in the strictest sense. Losing a house hurts. I need to put my cereal down. Wait, what's that guy's name? But more than anything, it's just fucking embarrassing. And you're talking to a guy who once accidentally took a shit in the ladies' room at the public library and got busted by a mom and her daughter while I was working there. Not burning your house down is your main job as a homeowner, and you fucked that one up big time, and everyone knows it. And people are going to talk shit. If you get a lot of insurance money, then people will say you're better off because you're no longer poor. And if you don't get enough money, people will say you're stupid because you didn't have good insurance. Sure, being poor and stupid is kind of my main deal, but I'm speaking generally here. God forbid there's a pandemic raging and a once in a century housing crisis when all this happens, because you might have to make offers on five houses to get one accepted and wait a year before you have a fucking couch. Yeah, hi, is this Geico? Hey, first of all, love your commercials, really funny stuff. Hey, second of all, if my house burns down a second time, do I get the insurance money again? But you will take the insurance money that you got for your record collection and go out and buy a brand new top of the line snowmobile for the first time in your life, because fuck you. Things are gonna get better, but it's gonna be hard to notice that they are. Wait, 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 wait. So what's the metaphor here? Don't worry about the metaphor. Uh, you're burning everything to start afresh. A, a cleansing fire. A clean slate. But all my stuff already burned up. True, yeah. I guess I didn't think of that. I mean, I'm just burning stuff that already burned. The burning of my house and all my stuff was the problem here, not the solution. Doesn't the Bible say something like, Ye shall burn thy possessions, even after doth burn, for they no. are... No! Okay, well, do you have a better idea? I guess we could show me going shopping or something? Yeah, that seems pretty lame. Fire looks cooler than shopping. Yeah, but we already established that fire is the bad guy here. We can't also have fire be the hero. I wanted this to be hopeful and triumphant, not confusing and depressing. If we wanted this to be hopeful and triumphant, then why did I douse myself with gas? I don't know. Fuck. Fuck. Ah, fuck! When I got to heaven, I was still a little bit on fire. And I turned to God and I said, God, I think I finally figured out a good metaphor we could have been going for by having me burn my house down for a second time. You see, you can't keep living in your burned down house emotionally. You need to burn it down again in your brain to move on. And God responded, J-Man, shut the fuck up. I'm going to miss you, house with all of my stuff in it. Sorry it didn't end up working out.